Hi again, everyone. Um, I'm hoping yesterday's lesson went well, okay? And we're going to have one more lesson today, uh, and we're going to end off with a quizzes assignment, okay? Multiple choice quizzes assignment. So please make sure as you're copying down the notes that you're kind of processing and you're understanding what's going on. Uh, take your time as you copy and think about what you're writing down as we discuss it together, okay? Uh, you are allowed, you are you are allowed to use your notes um, as you complete the quizzes assignment. Okay, so you're allowed to use your notes. Okay, let's start copying. So today we're focusing on energy in ecosystems. Okay, so how energy gets cycled through. Okay, so first of all, let's just start off by saying that all energy in an ecosystem ultimately comes from the sun. Okay, so the sun is the source of all the energy in an ecosystem. If you remember, the sun is what provides the energy for photosynthesis, right? And then what happens is that um, the CO2 in the atmosphere transforms into glucose or sugars. And then as one animal consumes uh, plants, okay, the sugars get transferred to the animal and then as those other consumers get consumed by other consumers the energy passes along okay but originally the energy comes from the sun it lights up and warms the surface of the earth evaporates water and provides energy for plants plants convert solar radiation to energy through a process called okay we know this photosynthesis Okay, everyone please say photosynthesis, photosynthesis. Okay, so it takes the solar radiation, that solar energy, um, and then it converts it uh, into photo, uh, through the process of photosynthesis. The sun's energy is transferred from one organism to another through food chains and food webs. All consumers get their energy by, they consume or they eat, eating other organisms. Okay, so the energy gets passed along by consuming or eating the different organisms through the food chain, food web. Okay, now where does this energy go? The interesting thing is that not all of the energy gets passed on to the next level. Okay, so let's just say you have, um, sorry, give me a second, uh, this mouse over here. Okay, so it, uh, as this mouse eats this the food, you know, for example, some grains or something like that, okay, there is 100% of the energy that's in the, in the grasses or the grains, okay, or, you know, the chocolates, whatever, the cheese, okay, that's available for this mouse to eat, okay, 100% of the energy. But the interesting thing is that not all of it gets passed on to the next level, okay, because the mouse actually has to use up some energy for its different body processes. Okay, so let's copy this down. This is quite a bit of text, so just get ready, okay, to copy quite a bit. So, 30% of it is used up for cellular respiration. Okay, so cellular respiration. Please feel free to pause this as needed. Okay, uh, cellular respiration is uh, the process where we breathe out. Okay, so we take in carbon dioxide and we breathe out Sorry, we take in oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide, okay? And also when you breathe out, you'll feel that there's also heat as well, okay? So this takes energy to breathe in and out. It also takes energy to expel this heat, okay? There's an energy conversion going on, okay? So that takes up 30% of the energy. Okay, please copy that down. Next up, 60% of the energy is used for waste matter and other activities. Okay, waste matter and other activities. So we actually have to expel wastes. We also have to do things such as digest our food. Our heart has to keep beating. Uh, even for example, as we walk around and stuff like that, right? It all takes energy. So 60% of the energy that we get from consuming food is used to used up to digest, keep our heart beating, keep our muscles going. Okay, 30% of it is for breathing in and out, providing heat as well. Okay, next up over here at the bottom here, 10% is actually that the energy that's stored in our tissues. 
stored in our tissues, and that's used for growth and reproduction, okay? So the energy that's used, the 10% that's used for growth and reproduction, that's what's stored in us. Everything else gets used up, okay? So as I run, I'm using energy, okay? As I'm breathing, I'm using energy. As I'm sweating, I'm producing heat, uh, which uses up energy. Okay, so interestingly enough, this little 10%, so maybe I'm going to highlight it as you copy, this little 10%, this is the only part that's available for the next trophic level. Okay, so if, for example, you know, some tiger was going to eat me up, okay, it would only get 10% of the energy that I originally consumed. Okay, so that's the only thing that's available to the next level. Okay, please copy this down as well. This is what's available to the next animal in the food chain. Okay, so this means that only 10% of the energy consumed at each trophic level is available for the next trophic level. Okay, so once again, I'm going to like highlight this 10% because this 10% is the same thing as this 10%. Everything else gets used up. Okay, so please copy that down. Take your time, okay? Be patient. Okay, stay focused, but be patient. Allow everyone to copy down quickly and quietly, okay? And if you're finished copying earlier, please be quiet so that other people can focus without being distracted, okay? Okay, I'm going to move on, but please feel free to pause as needed, okay? So in whenever we're talking about pyramids and also food chains, we always start at the bottom, okay? So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of this food chain. So over here, I've got a spruce and you don't need to take the you don't need to copy down this picture, okay? But a spruce is a type of evergreen, okay? A deer, I think we know what that is. There's a picture of a deer, and then here's a picture of a wolf. Just so that we know what we're talking about, okay? You don't need to copy this down, okay? So, if we are doing a pyramid of energy, or sorry, if we're tracking the energy, sorry, that's on the next page. If we're tracking the energy, we might have, for example, 1,000 kilojoules available from this spruce tree, okay? But only 10%, so please copy this down, draw an arrow going upwards and write down 10%. Only 10% of this 1,000 kilojoules is available for the deer, okay? So this deer gets only 100 kilojoules. Now, how do you get 10%? What you can do is you can multiply in your calculator times it by 0 0.1, okay? The other thing you can do is you can also, oh sorry, 1000 times 0 0.1, okay? So this is what you put into your calculator. 1000 times by 0 0.1. I would pause and try this out in your calculator. So everyone take out your phones, uh, pause this video and put into your calculator 1000 times 0 0.1 and equals. Okay, and tell me what number you get. Okay, you should get 100 kilojoules. Okay, now if we do that again, okay, so 10% is available again. So we're going to multiply, we're going to take 100 and multiply it by 0 0.1. What answer do you get? Okay, so everyone try that out again. Put that into your calculator. 100 times 0 0.1, what answer do you get? Okay, please feel free to pause the video and share your answer with the class. Okay, yeah, you get 10 kilojoules, okay? So notice that basically every time you're just getting rid of a zero. That's another way because we're just moving the decimal place over by one when we're multiplying or dividing by 10. Okay, so take a look at the bottom of the pyramid. We get 1,000 kilojoules available. That has the most. Then in the next level, we get 100. So one of the zeros got one away. Then we get rid of one more zero, divide by 10. And then by the end of this, the original spruce, which had a, originally 1,000 kilojoules, by the time that energy gets to the next level and the next level, only 10 kilojoules of energy is available for that wolf. Okay? Hope that makes sense. Okay, let's turn the paper and move on with the rest of the note, okay? Food chains are great. They show the direction of energy flow starting from the producer. However, it, there is a limitation. 
it does not show the amount of energy being passed. Okay, so we actually added in this extra little note right over here. These are food chains. It talks about how the food gets consumed, okay, at each level, but it doesn't talk about these numbers over here, which is energy, okay? Therefore, the movement of energy through a food chain can be shown as a pyramid, okay? So what we have here is a pyramid. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to label it first. Okay, so you'll notice that you have your little pyramid over here. Right beside it, I want you to draw, uh, sorry, what I want you to do here is draw, uh, now let's actually start over here. Okay, so over here I want you to draw a big rectangle and in it you're going to write down 1000 kJ, kilojoules. Okay, then you're going to draw a smaller rectangle on top, okay, because it's like a pyramid, so a wider base, and then smaller in the middle, and you have 100 kilojoules, and at the very top there's going to be a smaller rectangle, and it will have 10 kilojoules, just like what we've calculated. Okay, so at the very bottom there is the first trophic level, that's where the producers are, first trophic level, okay, Feel free to pause if I'm going too quickly, okay? Then next up, we've got the second trophic level, TL, I'm just abbreviating, okay, as trophic level, second TL. And then at the very top of this particular food pyramid, uh, sorry, pyramid of energy, we've got the third trophic level. Sometimes there's four, five, and six, and we saw those, uh, we saw those food chains as well, okay? So just remember at every, oh, this was at the bottom, which was the spruce, then we had the deer, then we had the wolf, okay? And then if you can just draw arrows going upwards, and we're just going to draw the 10%, okay? Every single time, 10%, okay? So each level of the pyramid gets 10% because energy is lost every time it is moved from one organism to the other, uh, as it, you know, the heart beats, muscles are working, we're performing cellular respiration, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and a reminder, in order to get the 10%, we multiply by 0 0.1. Okay, and you don't need to copy down what's in orange, but just a reminder, you take your numbers and you multiply by 0 0.1 as you go up. Another way of multiplying by 0 0.1, it's like kind of the opposite way, okay, the reverse process, uh, but it gives you the same result, is to divide by 10. Okay, you can multiply by 0 0.1 or you can divide by 10. Okay, now energy flows through ecosystems in a linear fashion because the food chain is straight, okay? It enters an ecosystem as solar radiation and leaves as heat. The path that energy follows starts with the sun. Okay, from the sun, energy is transferred to plants through the process of photosynthesis and then through animals through the process of consumption. Okay, so please copy this down and remind me, what does consumption mean? What's another word for consume? Well, another word for consume is eating, okay? Okay, now these animals undergo cellular respiration and then what happens is that this energy then goes back out into the universe in the form of heat, okay? Just remember that heat is generated by living things as we move, breathe, and function, okay? So interestingly enough, there's the water cycle. We just talked about the carbon cycle yesterday. And then there's also like the cycling and the transfer of energy from one form to another, okay? It gets passed along as well. Okay, so I'm running out of time because there's a 15 minute uh, time limit, so I'm going to make one more video just to finish this off.